Hey everybody, welcome to California Carnivores on this sweltering hot day in the greenhouse. I thought I'd answer a question that we get a lot, which is what do Venus flytraps actually eat and how do you feed them? So in the wilds of North and South Carolina where these things grow, they mostly catch ants as the first thing they catch. Their, their first shot will usually be an ant. And so some of you I think have been buying these to get rid of the little black Argentinian sugar ants that are invading your kitchen. Unfortunately, those ants are too small to be caught by a Venus flytrap. The ants that they're catching in North Carolina are usually larger ants, probably like about a quarter of an inch, like fire ants, or red ants. They're much more no-nonsense ants than those little tiny ants that are bothering you. They're also not great at catching fungus gnats. So if you bought a fung if you bought these to get rid of the fungus gnats that are like invading your house since you got all those house plants, Cape Sunday would have been a way better choice. Cape Sundays have sticky leaves that can catch tiny prey like that. They're excellent at that. But Venus flytraps, they're just not that great at it. And we'll show you why right now. So a good thing to feed them that you can buy at the pet shop, any pet shop, are mealworms. Um, usually they're like in a fridge at the pet shop somewhere. You can ask them where they are. And when you take them home, you can put them in your refrigerator for up to two months and they stay mostly alive. It's not the pleasant, most pleasant life in the whole wide world, but it will get the job done. So let's just take a look at the mechanism of the trap. These eyelashes don't do anything for closing the trap, but the sweet nectar that lures in their prey is right on the inside of the lip there. And so if you're a little fly face or a big ant and you're trying to get through these bars to get to that nectar, it's hard. And that forces the prey to come up through the middle of the trap. Now in the middle of the trap, there are three hidden trigger hairs on either side and they're pretty well spaced out. And this is why you need something kind of large in order to make it close and digest. Because you have to touch two trigger hairs at the same time or bend one twice quickly like the double click of a mouse in order to make it work. So if you're a little tiny ant or a little tiny fungus gnat, maybe if you stretched and stretched and stretched, you might actually be able to touch two trigger hairs at the same time, but probably not. And in fact, little tiny bugs like that they're not really big enough to even bend a trigger hair, and so probably they're not going to catch those. But let's see that in action with this big mealworm here. Don't worry, it's got meal right in the name. And we're going to put him right in there. Whoa! So you can see it closes really fast. It's got to close fast enough to catch its living prey before it flies away or crawls away. And it does need to be alive. Now what's going to happen is that mealworm is going to keep kicking around in there and hitting trigger hairs. And so by tomorrow, the trap will have closed even tighter. These little bars um, seal it in temporarily, but leave little holes for small bugs to get out. So even if like a tiny bug did manage to set off the traps, a tiny bug will still get out of those little holes. And we think that's on purpose because to digest with acids and enzymes, that all has to be made by the plant with energy. And so it'd be a big waste of time to do that for a tiny, tiny little bug. It only wants to do that if it caught something big. So now that that's trapped in there, by tomorrow, it will put acids and enzymes in there and start to digest it. The exoskeleton is hard to digest, so it will remain. So if it reopens, don't be discouraged. It's already sucked up all the soft parts for fertilizer that it needs, but the exoskeleton still stays there, but it absolutely did eat. If you put a dead bug in there and it opens up the very next day, that means it didn't digest it. It has to take that time to digest it. Um, but yeah, let's just do one more, just cause it's fun to watch. We'll hit that one right there. This one's gonna be well fed today. And this is the best way to feed your Venus flytrap. You can give them maxi fertilizer foliarly and maybe a little bit into the pot to help it grow, but feeding them the natural process with live prey is actually the best way and they grow way faster. This flytrap now, because it caught that, those two mealworms will be way bigger for it in a couple of weeks. So be sure to feed your Venus flytraps. They actually need that. And if you want to scavenge bugs in the yard, you can do that too. You don't have to buy them. You can go find slugs or roly polies or earwigs or some other thing you don't care for too much and toss it on in there. Probably lots of you have fed them hamburger too. You can put cheese or hamburger or something else gross in there. And sometimes they will digest that, um, but it's not so hot. Half the time if you put something really meaty or really fatty in there, the whole trap will rot because although the plant is producing like antibiotics and antifungals to digest and not just rot the thing, 
a big piece of hamburger is probably just gonna rot the trap off. So save your hamburger for the 4th of July and go buy yourself some mealworms or go find some bugs in the yard.